This is CBC Here and Now. My b-boy name is Lazy Legs. I like to call it uh, motivational entertainment. No excuses and no limits. This dancer breaks into Cornerbrook with a new message. The popular kids band, The Wiggles, are switching gears tonight and they'll be playing down here on George Street. I'll tell you all about it, coming up. Good evening, I'm Debbie Cooper. And I'm Anthony Germain. A grand opening today for the Wabush 3 project at the IOC mine in Labrador City. The company showed off its $79 million expansion. Our Jacob Barker was there. Jacob, what did you see today? Well, Debbie, uh, today's announcement was certainly a welcome one here in town. After all the ups and downs over the past couple of years in Lab West, IOC and uh, the region here see the new pit as a sign of stability for the region. Despite the wind and the cold, it was a warm welcome for the new mine pit. So not only did we deliver the project on time, it's been delivered on budget, it's been delivered safely, and we've met or exceeded every single one of the requirements that was given to us. There's 50 mineable years in the new pit, adding 12 years to the overall life of the mine. It's a tremendous boost to the economy in this area and everyone in this province will feel uh, the impact of this investment today. It's an exciting time. So that shovel up there on the hill is actually bringing out production ore, which is going straight into our crusher and then out to our customers around the globe. They're calling it the Moss Pit after a man who was instrumental in the exploration and development of what is today the IOC mine. Right now, the work is on the surface, a fresh source of iron ore to dig into, easier to get at than the loose pit their mining has been ongoing since the turn of the century. It's not as deep, so it's, it's, easier to, it's easier and faster to get access to the ore, which is helpful. Walker says the expansion has been in the works for the past five years. With ups and downs along the way, a worker strike disrupted production earlier this year. In 2016, the expansion was again delayed because of, the company said, low production. And in 2015, it was put off because of the low price of iron ore. Unfortunately, in 2015 was a bad one, and uh, nevertheless, the IOC managed to survive it, and here we are today, our ore prices are rebounding, the markets are strong, and uh, so IOC see the, see the future in this project, and, and that's why we see today that Wabish 3 is going ahead. As part of the project, some promised changes are being made at the Menahek Ski Club, and work is ongoing on Smoky Mountain, where new lifts are being installed. Labrador City's avid snowboarding mayor approves of that. I want to get first dibs at that and uh, no, it's extremely good for the community. Uh, I'm really happy and I'll be living up there this winter. Well, it's good news for the community, Jacob. Rio Tinto, though, which owns the majority share of the IOC mine, has reportedly been looking to sell its shares of the company. Did they have anything to say about that today? Yeah, well, I did take the opportunity to put that question to CEO Clayton Walker. And here's a little bit of what he said about that. I wish I could answer that, but uh, I don't get to sit in the boardroom of Rio Tinto, and that's a decision that gets made out of London. Understood. Lots of rumors, and it's just rumors right now. I think time will tell how it plays out. Okay. So that speculation will continue, but inside at the new mine pit, workers are head down, keeping, uh, keeping at work, trying to get the, all that iron ore out and to market, and they're hoping to do that for many years to come. Reporting live for here now in Labrador City, I'm Jacob Barker. Residents of St. John's can expect to pay more in property taxes next year. The city says the mill rate could go up by as much as 8.5%. Residents will soon receive a brochure in their mailboxes explaining the city's budget and its anticipated solutions. That budget won't be public until mid-December, but Councillor Dave Lane says it will include a tax increase to maintain services. Lane says it's all due to increasing costs such as electricity and a drop in revenues after housing values were reassessed. A criminal case involving the Coast Guard and two of its former supervisors has taken a bitter turn. Three years after criminal charges were laid, the Coast Guard is now suing the two St. John's men, and now they've turned against each other. Ryan Cook reports. 
Well, it started with two men and a boy, or a buoy, depending on how you pronounce it. Brian Stone and Kevin Barnes designed a little yellow buoy when the Coast Guard decided they needed new ones to measure things like ocean currents. But it turned out there was an issue. Stone and Barnes were both senior members, supervisors with the Coast Guard at the time. The Coast Guard says they used government money to build those yellow buoys and that the men then authorized the purchase of their own buoys. They were charged with fraud, but that criminal case is making its way through the courts like molasses. And so in July, the Coast Guard sued the two men for more than $200,000 in this lawsuit. Stone responded by denying he did anything wrong. He says the entire project was nationally approved and supervised by his superiors. Then a few weeks later, Burns filed his defense, a bombshell 13-page document where he sued the Coast Guard and sued his old business partner. Barnes says Stone was his supervisor at work and that in a uniformed service, you respect the ranks above you. If he did anything illegal, Barnes says it was Stone who dragged him into it and therefore it should be Stone who pays the damages. That led Stone to file another response, this time stating that Barnes was a very active participant in every part of this project. In a slow-moving criminal case, it's not uncommon to see people move to civil court to try and exact their pound of flesh. But now they're dealing with all of this. Lawsuits on top of lawsuits. A tangly evolution in the bitter case of two men and a buoy. Ryan Cook, CBC News, St. John's. Seeing all of the winter weather that's going to happen and the freezing rain and the drizzle and the fog as a weather person, as a meteorologist, it uh, makes me very happy. From CBC North to Newfoundland and Labrador. We're welcoming the newest member to the Here and Now team. And it'll be a frosty evening on the island tonight while rain pushes across Labrador. Temperatures flirting with the mid-teens for much of the province tomorrow. Details coming up. An Avondale man was granted his freedom today, more than a year after being jailed for shooting someone. Jesse Lewis pleaded self-defense and the judge agreed. Lewis was in a bitter dispute with a 33-year-old man named Bernard Mason last year after both men slept with each other's girlfriends. Mason went to Lewis's home and became violent, allegedly assaulting a woman inside the house. And that's when Lewis grabbed a sawed-off shotgun and shot him in the leg. Lawyer Mark Grushy was successful in arguing for his acquittal. Justice Alphonsus Fowler told Lewis he was giving him a break and urged him to use this chance wisely. A driver was taken to hospital today following a single vehicle crash in St. John's. The injured didn't have that far to go. The car plunged into a small river just across from Munns Medical School, which is attached to the Health Sciences Centre. Police are still trying to figure out exactly how the car went off the road. Earlier this afternoon, an RNC spokesperson said the driver's injuries are unknown. A letter from the Archbishop of St. John's to his parishioners is being called a step in the right direction. Martin Curry wrote a letter addressing Catholics in the province during what he calls a time of crisis. Curry acknowledged the anger felt by many, including those in his own diocese, and says people are discouraged, disheartened, and ashamed by the ongoing scandals the latest of which involves the abuse of thousands of Catholics in Germany over nearly seven decades. Activist Gemma Hickey founded an organization for survivors of clergy abuse. Hickey believes the Archbishop wrote the letter from his heart, but says the Catholic Church's response to ongoing abuse scandals is not enough. In a written letter to the Pope, Hickey calls it a global crisis. When I founded Pathways, uh, I was saying that this issue is just, we've only scratched the surface, really. And, uh, you know, as a result of new allegations in uh, Pennsylvania and now Germany, in fact, I'm going to Germany in uh, a couple of weeks to, uh, I'm hopefully meeting up with some survivors there. Um, you know, people are mobilizing. A U.S. court has sentenced disgraced comedian Bill Cosby from three to five years in state prison. The prosecution wanted 10 years for the sexual assault conviction, but the defense argued for a reduced sentence given Cosby's age and his poor health. And reaction from Cosby's team was swift. You will suffer the consequences if you are convicted in a court of law of drugging and assaulting a woman, something that is all too common. We have now learned 
and will prove that Bill Cosby was denied his right to a fair trial. Cosby was convicted of sexually assaulting Canadian Andrea Constat in 2004. Earlier today, the judge designated Cosby as a sexually violent predator. And that means he has to register with state police, take sex offender counseling, and he has to notify the public of his whereabouts. And Andrea Constant told the court that the assault has left her with a lifetime of emotional damage. Now, throughout the trial, Cosby has maintained his innocence. The judge denied Cosby's request for bail and noted that no one is above the law. The defense is appealing. Liberal Premier Brian Gallant says he plans to stay on as Premier of New Brunswick for now, even though the PCs won exactly one more seat in last night's election. With such a narrow gap and neither party earning a majority, Gallant went to see the province's Lieutenant Governor today. She has uh, granted us the opportunity uh, to face the legislature to see if we can maintain the confidence of the House. And I would like to just get on with it and uh... I think all this is doing is pro prolonging the inevitable, really. PC leader Brian Higgs says he's waiting for some of the riding's votes to be recounted. That's expected to be done by October 5th. Gallant says he'll take a few days to make any decisions about calling the legislature. One thing both leaders said is clear is that New Brunswickers want change. The last time they had a minority government was in 1920. A hip-hop dancer is hitting stages and venues in this province. Luca Lazy Legs Potwelli is a world-class performer who has limited use of his legs. And he's giving a performance and motivational speech tonight at the Arts and Culture Centre in Cornerbrook. Here now is Colleen Connors met up with him during a practice. My b-boy name is Lazy Legs and it was given to me by some friends who introduced me to this dance over 15 years ago. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, and uh, in the breaking scene or in hip hop in general, it's very typical for someone to give you your name. You kind of have to earn it. Uh, there's a lot of movements that I'm physically not capable to do because of the way my legs are born and also because of my shoulders, but I was also able to create my own unique style by using the strength of my arms and using my crutches as an extension of my arms. For me, I love challenging myself to discover new movement, to discover things that I didn't think I could do and be like, oh, whoa, if I just put my hand here, I can spin even more, or uh, I can hold this position, and it looks weird and feels weird, but yet it looks good. Why I have lazy legs? So I was born with a, a neuromuscular disorder called arthrogryposis. It's a bone and joint disorder, um, which also affects the muscular growth. And what makes arthrogryposis so rare is that anyone that's affected with it can affect them in completely different areas of their body. So. Uh, I have arthrogryposis primarily affecting me in my legs and in my shoulder, but someone else who has arthrogryposis can affect like one arm, one leg, or their mouth, or their whole body. So I like to call it uh, motivational entertainment. So it's a mix of like a motivational speaking where I share my story um, about how I overcame my adversity, how I discovered my passion, and the projects that I currently work on in terms of uh, raising awareness for people uh, that are differently abled. Um, and uh, at the same time, I do have several dance performances that I do throughout uh, the piece, uh, but I also am very interactive. So we do like a huge flash mob, so the audience ends up dancing with me, and then I'll have uh, different moments where I'll invite audience members onto the stage. So this is, I would say that this is actually my first official like Lazy Legs tour. Like I've, I've performed, I've joined tours, I've been part of tours, uh, but this is the first time where like venues have booked me and I have like a huge flyer and people have to pay for tickets to come in for me to, to be able to have like my own venue. I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> 
is cool. Tremendous upper body strength. Luca is amazing. is pretty wow. impressive. Yeah. I hope they have a great time out there in Cornerbrook. Well, tonight, George Street here in St. John's will get to see a different side of one of the world's most popular children's groups. Certainly true. Members of Australia's The Wiggles have a side project. It's called The Unusual Commoners, and that's when the guys ditch the kitty music in favor of a more mature sound. Here now is Jeremy Eaton joins us live now from George Street. So, Jeremy, where's the show going to happen? It's going to happen right here at the Rock House. Now, it was supposed to be at the Ship Inn, but due to overwhelming demand, they had to move it to a bigger location. So in just a few hours, fans are going to get treated to a different side of the insanely popular Wiggles. Now, earlier today, the Wiggles were playing for their traditional audience. You know, the audience that likes to dress up like their favorite cast members or bring signs into the show. Now, over the past two days, the Wiggles have sold out six shows at the Holy Heart Theater. Now, the band has enjoyed outrageous success entertaining a younger audience, many of whom had to be carried into the theater today. Oh, this is the place where the fishermen gather in oilskins and boots and the cape hands batten down. So Purple Wigger, Wiggle, that's Lockie Gillespie, and Wiggle's founder, Blue Wiggle, Anthony Field, seen here in a 2016 video they shot in Kitty Vitty, make up the folk band Unusual Commoners. Now, backed by musicians who help out with the kids' shows, the band have performed in their home country of Australia, but tonight, the band is taking that show on the road for the first time. Now, much like regular Wiggle shows, it's going to be hard to get a ticket to this show, and it won't be easier to get in here tonight. Now, there's no pre-sale. you got to buy the tickets in person, and already people have knocked on the door trying to get in, and the doors don't even open until 8 p.m. Now, unlike every other Wiggle shows, like the last six they played here in St. John's, nobody under the age of 19 is allowed in. Reporting live for Here and Now, I'm Jeremy Eaton on George Street in St. John's. I am a pilot. I've been flying since I was 16 years old, and so I basically could fly a plane before I could drive a car. From Canada's north to CBC Newfoundland and Labrador. We're welcoming Here and Now's newest meteorologist. Meet Ashley Brawweiler after the break.
Well, you may have heard a big here and now announcement today. We're welcoming a new meteorologist to the uh, CBCNL family. Well, as you know, Carolyn's been holding down the weather fort. Uh, we're grateful for that, but you're also a reporter, and we know you want to get back in the field. Oh, <laughs> definitely. So I'll be handing off the weather baton to the newest member of the Here and Now team. She'll soon be making the big move to Newfoundland from CBC North, Ashley Brawweiler. Ashley's joining us right now uh, from Yellowknife. Nice to finally meet you, Ashley. <laughs> Ashley, Yellowknife is a very long way away, but uh, we hear you're actually pretty familiar with uh, Newfoundland and Labrador. What's the Buren connection? Yeah, my um, my niece, my youngest niece was born there uh, about five, well, five years ago now. My sister used to live there, uh, so I visited back when she was born. I spent about a month and a half there. And there's an, uh, a weather connection as well, I understand. Yeah, so just before, well, actually, during the time that she was born, I was actually working for AMEC uh, in St. John's there. I was I'm in Ottawa at that point, um, but the company, obviously, the head office, our head weather office is in St. John's. So I was uh, I was there visiting and then working and then going back and forth for from the period for when, uh, when Lauren was born. Now, Ashley, you've got a pretty impressive list of extracurricular activities, and no doubt once you come and join here now, we're going to exploit that as much as humanly possible. <laughs> Uh, you love the outdoors, you're an athlete, you've got a pilot's license. So I do. are you yeah. coming here with some kind of AccuWeather chopper when you get here or? <laughs> oh my, if that's possible, I would love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what kinds of things do you hope to do here when you get here, uh, either on the air or in your free time? Uh, I, you know, I'm coming kind of right into in the thick of winter or the potential for the thick of winter uh so i don't know how much outdoorsy stuff i'm going to get to do as far as like camping or fishing but um that's definitely one of my favorite things to do on the weekends or even after work here in Yellowknife. you know in the summertime the sun doesn't go down so i was able to do that after the show um but i'm just looking forward to exploring and driving because you can't drive here so it's nice to be able to drive out and see different communities because they're all flying most part here uh, yeah it's, I'm really looking forward to it. well it's gonna be great to see you explore everything and, and see our province through your eyes and I know that the weather patterns in Newfoundland and Labrador are very different from what you see up north do you think it's gonna be a little bit more challenging forecasting here compared to what you're used to yeah just a little bit uh, <laughs> We, uh, you know, we've seen our fair share of, or at least I forecasted my fair share of blizzards in the north, specifically in Nunavut. Here in Yellowknife, um, we see a lot of sunshine in the summer, but it's cold. So, um, you know, now going to seeing all of the the winter weather that's going to happen and, and the freezing rain and the drizzle and the fog. I know not necessarily everybody loves that, but as a weather person, as a meteorologist, it, uh, it makes me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are kind of a twisted bunch compared to the rest of us, uh, more or less. Yeah. <laughs> and I bet you already have a great parka. I do, but I might have to switch that for a, uh, a really good rain jacket. I think you can use both. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> Maybe on the same day sometimes. <laughs> well, it's so good to meet you, Ashley. Yes, and we're really looking forward to your first day. It's going to be on October 15th yeah. when I'll hand over the weather clicker to you. Uh, but until then, I do have a weather forecast to get to. So we'll say goodbye just for now, and we'll see you soon, Ashley. Bye, okay, Ashley. Awesome. See you guys. Great. Bye. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, so Carolyn, your days are numbered apparently. <laughs> yep, tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> but it's all good. It'll be nice to get back out in the field again. And she seems so great, doesn't she? She I mean, really she's does. She's going to really fit in here. So I wanted to start the weather actually with a fantastic photo. Have you noticed the moon? Oh, I did <laughs> last night driving <laughs> home. It's spectacular. Oh, and I just love this shot of Prosser's uh, rock, uh, Jean. Hertzberg uh, sent this in, just a spectacular 
harvest moon. It's beautiful. Yeah, lovely. And if you do have anything uh, to harvest uh, and you're living between Deer Lake and St. John's, you'll want to cover it up tonight because we do have another frost advisory in place for those areas. I'll definitely be covering up my jalapeno peppers uh, tonight. Don't want to lose those babies. For uh, the island tonight, you can see clear skies, perfect conditions for that frost. Some showers pushing through Labrador, though not super heavy showers, but it's going to be a pretty Wet night starting in Lab West, pushing eastwards to Happy Valley Goose Bay in the Cartwright area. Overnight lows on the island tonight between uh, 1 and 5 degrees with mostly clear skies. About 2 to 4 millimeters of rain expected for Lab West and a southwesterly wind. 30 gusting to 50, so it's going to be kind of breezy up there. About 5 millimeters of rain expected for the Cartwright area overnight tonight. And getting into tomorrow, the temperatures aren't so bad, actually. We can see some cloud cover over most of the island, a little bit clearer there in the east, and some showers uh, for the west coast and more rain for Lab West tomorrow. And that will continue to push eastwards as well. But for the Avalon, we're looking at about 15 degrees in St. John's with a mix of sun and cloud. That's not too bad, right? Gets cloudier as you move to the west. A chance of showers for parts of central. 17 degrees is the high for Grand Falls winter tomorrow. I'll take that for sure. And of course, a better chance of showers on the west coast uh, tomorrow. And more showers actually Wednesday night. That's when it's really going to start to rain more. But you could see some showers uh, during the day. And 15 as the high in Corner Brook. About 2 to 4 millimeters of rain expected in the Porter. Schwa, St. Anthony area, 14 degrees expected there tomorrow. And for the rest of Labrador, another five millimeters of rain for Lab City tomorrow, 13 degrees as the high and about two to four for Happy Valley Goose Bay tomorrow and 16. So pretty good temperatures, I'd say, for this time of year. And we do have uh, that warm up kind of continuing for a few more days uh, this week. I'll get into those details a bit later. <laughs> That's the part that always gets me. <laughs> touch and behind, yes. forward Trying touch. To put our best feet I like the foot stamping part, but I'm fine. <laughs> I don't think I'm getting this. As much as I like dancing with you. Anthony. You know, you definitely need some professional help. Uh oh, Anthony and Carolyn yeah. give flamenco a go. You don't want to miss this. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you do. <laughs>
morning. Showtime. Tune in to the St. John's Morning Show with Chrissy Holmes and Fred Hutton. Weekday mornings from 5.30 to 9. Welcome back, everyone. And these guys had quite the assignment today, uh, learning yeah. a few new dance steps. Yeah, uh, well, trying <laughs> to learn a few new dance steps, but it's... Uh, not easy dance tips, and how did, you, how did you find it? Oh my goodness, it was so hard. And Anthony, when you invited me to this shoot, you could have <laughs> told me that it was flamenco that yes. we're going to be doing. We went to the Arts and Culture Center to meet members of the Flamenco Project. Yeah, and uh, you actually dressed, you could actually be at flamenco <laughs> today, so that afterwards. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we'll take a look at our very brave teachers. Uh, we'll see them right here. <laughs> okay, try again, try again. Now, Carol unfortunately had that dress which hid every single mistake. I actually wanted to wear a dress to hide my feet because it's tricky. Uh, oh, what can I say? Uh, my there, foot is there. still recovering okay, from my accident. Too bad I couldn't uh, go. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you're really disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the left foot, uh, that was my problem. As Carolyn said, the professionals, they make it look really easy, but it takes years to get as good as they are. And you're going to see just how good in just a moment. Raíz y Alas is a dance company that has returned to go right across the island, offering flamenco workshops and public shows in arts and culture centers everywhere. And one of the lead dancers, actually from St. John's, after Andrea Williams gave us our dance lesson, Carolyn and I asked how flamenco became such a big, passionate part of her life. My name is Andrea Williams and I'm originally from St. John's and I first discovered flamenco in southern France. I came across a pilgrimage of what we would call gitanos in a small town called Sainte Marie de la Mer and I just fell in love with the music. And I came back to St. John's and at the ship there was this lovely group called El Viento Flamenco that were performing and I said, this is great, here's two worlds colliding. Next thing you know, I'm in Vancouver and I'm in a flamenco dance company there. And now I have the chance to bring that beautiful form of art that we've developed in Vancouver back to St. John's. I think for me, it started with the music. It's a kind of music that kind of eats you from the inside. It's very hard to sit still when you're listening to flamenco music. There's a raw energy to it. The music comes from the suffering of a people, the struggle of a people and the oppression that they experienced. And it grows out of that. And then from that sort of very deep pit of despair comes this beautiful music that resonates on so many levels across the board. And you don't have to be Spanish to understand the, what they are transmitting through the music. The emotion is there. People often say that uh, flamenco dancers are some of the most sexy dancers, but really what we're doing is we're using our entire bodies to dance. So we take the music and we express it physically. So you'll see some dancers who have a very, very serious uh, nature to their dance. You'll often see a change in expression in their face because they are embodying on all levels the form of dance. And then other forms in flamenco, you will see the, the sort of cheekier side. And that's when the sort of the adjective sexy comes out because we move our hips, we use our hands very frequently. Uh, there's uh, often kind of gestures that uh, with the eyes as well. So we're using everything. When you finish a show or a workshop and you look back at what you have either taught or performed, how do you feel? Exhilarated. Teaching is such a rewarding thing, and teaching flamenco especially, because you can see somebody who may have had no dance experience whatsoever pick up just a tiny bit, and the change in their face and the change in their confidence level, just, it drives you home. It's great. All right guys, it's that time of the year. Everybody's got a little bit of fish in their freezer. So I'm gonna show you my ultimate fish and chips. All right. 
Last Last night. <laughs> we both want we both want fish and chips. He showed us the finer points of filleting. <laughs> Tonight, Chef Mark McCrow teaches a few tricks for frying up the perfect meal of cod. Land and Sea returns with a brand new season, beginning Sunday, October 14th. That's at noon on the island, 1130 in most of Labrador. Well, for local chef Mark McCrow, the make or break for any fee and chi recipe is, of course, the batter. Mm, he's not alone. In the second part of our series, Mark is revealing his secret to the ultimate fish and chips. And here's a hint, hint. It helps that this was filmed next to a brewery. Of course. All right, guys, it's that time of the year. Everybody's got a little bit of fish in their freezer. So I'm going to show you my ultimate fish and chips. All right, so the ultimate fish and chip starts off with beautiful fresh cod. And my little trick is I like to salt it, and let it sit for about 15, 20 minutes just to draw some of the excess moisture out. That way you can pat it dry and your batter is going to stay that much crispier. So the ultimate fish and chips fry starts with skin on potatoes. You want to go ahead and cut nice thick slices, stack them up and cut them into nice chunky fries. Once your fries are cut, Rinse them in cold water just to take away any excess starch. Once they're rinsed, pat them dry on a paper towel just so they won't splatter when they go into the hot oil. Blanch your fries at 275 degrees just till they're slightly cooked through and the ultimate fish and chips needs the ultimate tartar. Start off with a couple of heaping tablespoons of mayonnaise, a little bit of Dijon mustard, roughly chop a couple of dill pickles, a tablespoon of capers, and some Italian flat leaf parsley. Get everything on your board, just sort of hash it up. Everything into a bowl, nice and roughly chopped. Then you want to hit it with a little bit of fresh lemon zest, a little bit of lemon juice, just to make it pop. So for the perfect beer batter, start off with a cup of flour, pinch of salt, tablespoon of baking powder, then get your favorite local beer and just make it rain. If you're looking for a good consistency on the batter, you don't want it too thick, too thin. Just dip your finger in and it should be able to coat your finger nicely. Okay, now that your fries are cooked once, it's time to go back in at a higher temperature to get them nice and crispy. Drop them right in the hot oil. We got it at about 320 degrees now, and you're gonna get a nice crispy french fry. 
Once the excess moisture is cooked out of your fries, they'll start to float to the top, become nice and golden brown. Then you know you got the perfect fry. So you want to go in, scoop them out, shake any excess oil off, and right into a bowl, and season with salt. Coat your fish in seasoned flour, dip it in the batter, and then drag it around and gently and slowly lay it into the hot oil. Now to plate it up, get a nice stack of fries right in the middle of your board, pile them high, go back in, get your fish out of the oil, drain off any excess on a piece of paper towel. Anything comes out of hot oil, you want to season it with a little bit of sea salt. And then there you go, stack it nice and high right on top of your fries. Get that ultimate tartar sauce right on there, drizzle down the side. And for me, any good fish and chips needs homemade dressing and a good drizzle of gravy. Just to jazz it up, I like to finish it with a malt vinegar spritz and a wedge of lemon on the side. And that's it, my ultimate fish and chips. I'm starving. That's, that's wrong. <laughs> it's, it's 27 Island time. I'm out of here, Debbie. Forget Soft, it. I'm, not, really I'm, good. I'm going to get food. See ya. Anthony, be back after the break. <laughs> Use them only once, but it takes like thousands of years to uh, decompose. Tonight on our series, Waves of Change, we go diving with two scuba divers to get an up-close look at ocean pollution. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone. Mm -hmm. oh, great night tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fish and chips, meeting Ashley, everything. It's a lot of fun. Flamenco dancing. Yes. It's all good. <laughs> and, you know, the forecast isn't too bad. That's good. Uh, there are some decently warm temperatures uh, coming, like mid-teens. That's not too bad, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to start with some current temperatures in the province uh, right now. Five degrees in St. John's, nine in Badger, nine in Happy Valley, Goose Bay. We do have a frost advisory in effect. Yeah. <laughs> 
If you're in the Deer Lake, Bay Vert, uh, over to St. John's, Marystown, Gander, you'll want to cover up any frost sensitive plants that you can overnight tonight for sure. We do have this system on the way that's going to bring some rain to Labrador as well as to the island. A nice, clear, cool night on the island tonight with that frost, but showers pushing across Labrador uh, overnight tonight. Not too heavy though. And another round of showers coming through on Wednesday through Lab West and as well as uh, the west coast of the island and looking at some showers uh, tomorrow afternoon. St. John's getting up to about 15 degrees with a mix of sun and cloud. It gets a bit cloudier as you go west. A chance of showers in central areas. 17 in Grand Falls, Windsor. For Corner Brook, 15 degrees there as well as for Port of Basque with those showers and kind of breezy too. Southwesterly wind, 30 gusting to 50 tomorrow. As we head to Labrador, about two to four millimeters of rain expected for Happy Valley Goose Bay. Chance of showers for Cartwright, 13 degrees in Nain tomorrow, as well as in Lab City with five millimeters of rain expected there. So Wednesday night is really when the heavier rain will be coming for the island, particularly the west coast. The Port of Basque, Burgio area could see about 10 to 20 millimeters of rain Wednesday night, about five to 10 millimeters for the Corner Brook area up through the northern Peninsula. So it is going to be a wet night. Then things start to clear off for Labrador, but uh, staying pretty wet there on the island as the system starts in the west and then continues to push eastward uh, throughout the day on Thursday. You can see that band of heavy rain there, but temperatures, look at this, 18 degrees for western uh, Newfoundland as well as for central areas, 16 in the east with a chance of showers. It's going to be pretty windy though. We're looking at uh, some southerly winds, uh, so it is going to be quite a breezy wet day for the west and for central. For Labrador, a mix of sun and cloud right across the board and temperatures cooler in the west at seven degrees as the high there. So the Avalon Peninsula will start to see those showers uh, later on on Friday morning uh, and as well uh, continuing throughout most of the day. You can see a band of fairly heavy showers there as well. So looking at showers on Friday, 12 degrees as the high in the east, but staying at around 17 for the west and central with a chance of showers there, but a, a nice Friday coming for uh, western Newfoundland, 17 degrees there with a mix of sun and cloud and sun and cloud for uh, Labrador as well, 16 in the east, not too shabby for this time of year. So we do have, you know, quite a bit of rain coming, but temperatures Decent in the mid teens, mostly in the east, a little bit higher there in central areas. A nice Saturday. Hopefully, that forecast will hold for Saturday. 18 degrees with sun and cloud in central. A chance of showers on Saturday for uh, western Newfoundland, 16 degrees there. And a chance of showers as well for eastern Labrador on Saturday and Sunday. Temperatures a little bit on the cooler side and cooler still there in Lab West with a chance of flurries there on Sunday. So, that's your forecast. Back to you guys. Well, there's a bit of buzz in downtown St. John's tonight, and it's not the booze. <laughs> Members of the Wiggles will be heading down to George Street to perform some songs as their alternative band for grown-ups. Here now is Jeremy Eaton is also downtown town tonight. He's joining us once again. Um, Jeremy, anybody lining up yet? No, uh, nobody is lined up yet. Uh, still about an hour away until the door is open. But in the last hour and a half that we've been down here, a number of people have been knocking on the door trying to get early tickets. And that's because two members of the popular band, the Wiggles, are going to ditch their colorfully coordinated outfits for more casual clothes, ditch the Wiggles' traditional music meant for the preschool audience, and play some traditional folk music. So it's going to be the first time that Anthony Field and Lockie Gillespie have performed as the unusual commoners outside of Australia. Now, the Wiggles are no stranger to this province, and it appears the band has become quite taken with Newfoundland and Labrador, choosing to record the squid jigging ground and making a music video of it in Kitty Bitty a couple of years ago. And in the last two days, they've played six sold out shows at Holy Hurt. So the band first formed in the early 1990s, meaning millions of their fans have now grown up. So the children in St. John's who grew up listening to the Wiggles are now able to go to this 19 and over show. And if uh, the knocking on the door is any indication the switching of venues is any indication there will be a lot of people out here tonight to check out the unusual commoners reporting live for here and now i'm jeremy eaton in st john's
The two scuba divers from Nova Scotia are appealing to the federal government to help stop marine pollution. Every time they dive, the pair pulls up piles and piles of plastic bottles and other trash littering the ocean floor. Statistics show Canadians dump millions of tons of garbage into our coastal waters every year. And as CBC's Olivier Lefebvre explains, much of it is only used once, but it pollutes forever. Geneviève Philibert and Alexandre Normando scuba dive for fun around Halifax. Today we meet them at the wharf in Lower Prospect. As uh, usual, when we go diving, we brought a little mesh bag because we uh, usually found, find a little trash underwater, uh, bottles, piece of plastic. We're going to see how much waste we can find underwater during a single dive. Whenever you're near a coast, like the ocean, the waves, the current and tides, and even the wind just like blows up uh, trash from the shore. So uh, we can expect to find something. She's right. Cans, bottles, kids' toys, plastics. So much waste is collected that we have to bring it up before diving again. We stumble on other items like an old CD, a piece of hose, things that don't belong here. Alexandre Normando is a marine geoscientist. He can't stop thinking about the journey of waste, which can be accelerated with marine avalanches. Especially on the West Coast, where there's been some studies about that, uh, they show that the plastic can move along with longshore currents along the coast. And then if the submarine avalanches that are triggered once every, uh, every month or so, uh, Archer, then they can bring those, those plastic, those waste, uh, very deep in the ocean. His partner would like to see the federal government do more to keep waste from ending up in our oceans. In particular, single-use plastics like straws and packaging. We use them only once, but it takes like thousands of years to uh, decompose. The statistics are astounding. According to the Canadian government, 8 million tons of waste end up each year in the oceans. The weight of plastic waste in the water could exceed the weight of fish as soon as 2050. Time is running out. The effects of plastic waste on the environment are even worse than we thought. A Canadian researcher working at the University of Hawaii Sarah Jeanne Royer proved last month that plastic degradation is a source of greenhouse gas emissions. After 45 minutes, our harvest is quite impressive. We've picked up dozens of objects that otherwise might have drifted to deeper waters. Olivier Lefebvre, CBC News, Halifax. Ottawa Gatineau residents are being beaten up by the weather again today. On Friday, tornadoes battered hundreds of homes, leaving many without roofs. Now, more rain is on the way. The CBC's Hannah Thibodeau has the latest from one of the hardest hit areas near Ottawa. Today's main task is trying to keep the rain out of the homes that had been stomped on by Friday's tornado. 400 volunteers and skilled workers join firefighters to weatherproof the 53 homes that have been deemed uninhabitable. So yesterday was triage. Today is still triage. So we're looking at strapping down these houses, trying to get them rainproof, because here we are and the rains are coming in. And uh, so that was our biggest goal. Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodale surveyed the site. He says at this point, the federal government hasn't had to provide any financial support, but he was stunned by the devastation. When you see the, 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 the devastation up front, it is stunning uh, and uh, heart rendering. And the, the random, capricious net nature of it is, uh, is, is something you, you see immediately, a, a home that's been totally destroyed, uh, nothing left but, uh, but kindling, and then across the street, uh, another home that's uh, um, almost in, uh, in perfect condition. Uh, and that, that's what makes these circumstances so hard to, to deal with. Goodale is the latest politician to visit the area, but people who lost their homes still aren't sure how that will help. We'll see, right? Talk is cheap, but uh, I'm sure they're, they feel bad, everyone does, and uh, we'll see what happens down the road. 
Just to give you a sample of how strong the tornado was, take a look at this behind me. This is a tree it took down. The roots are more than two times taller than me. Crews continue to clean up the debris, but the job is far from over. Hannah Thibodeau, CBC News, Dunrobin, Ontario. South of the border now, U.S. President Donald Trump says the United States will only give foreign aid to countries that respect us. In a speech today at the United Nations General Assembly, Trump denounced Iran and took a swipe at China. Trump also bragged about his achievements, but the audience of world leaders laughed at him. The administration has accomplished more than almost any administration in the history of our country. America's so true. <laughs> Didn't expect that reaction, but that's okay. Last year, Trump mocked the North Korean leader as Rocket Man, but this year he complimented Kim Jong Un for taking steps to get rid of nuclear weapons. Here's our picture of the day, beach party. Wow. <laughs> Looking at, look at these guys hanging out uh, on the beach on the rocks somewhere in the province. I'll give you a hint, it's by the ocean. <laughs> oh. So <Thanks>. generous. <laughs> How many seal coves are there in this province? <laughs> I'll let you know where the shot was taken after the break. <laughs> there we, we are. Go. <laughs> well, hello. I've got to flamenco again before things happen. There we are. We're nearing the end of the program, <laughs> yes. and uh, you showed us a lovely shot before yeah, we went to commercials. These seals hanging out on the beach. This was taken in Renews. Oh, not too far. Not too far away from St. John's. Yeah, just great chilling. shot. Just chilling, hanging out on the rocks. Thank you very much, Linda Cutler, for sending the shot in. Wonder what they were dining on. <laughs> <laughs> they look yeah. like they should be like basking in the sun, except it doesn't look like it's very sunny. <laughs> Just chilling. Just chilling, chilling and renews. <laughs> what else are you going to do? So if you have a photo, please uh, feel free to send it in. Uh, email it to nlphotos at cbc.ca.
Well, like those seals, I think there's a dish of cod with my name on it after oh. uh, that feature. So yeah, it sounds like a pretty good idea now, doesn't it? It sounds excellent. Food fisheries on. There's got to be some yeah. cod somewhere. Oh, right? definitely. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure some of our viewers are probably having that for supper tonight. Yeah, we'll anyway. see you in University Avenue as soon as the show's over. <laughs> <laughs> see you tomorrow. Good night, everyone. Good night.